Um, so, I'm neither a programmer nor a mathematician. I studied German linguistics and German history, so I have not as much knowledge about roguelike programming as you. I just do it somehow, and mostly it works somehow. Um, I want to talk about a theoretical view of roguelikes or view on roguelikes, um, influenced by my yeah, profession. So, it's no programming um, presentation, it's more a Linguistic communication scientists' uh, presentation. Um, it starts with just a comparison. This is a screenshot of my own roguelike, Lambda Rogue. Um, in the recent, well, it's a little bit dark, but uh, you can see it. In the recent versions, I uh, made some optimizations on the graphical view of Lambda Rogue, but there are three different. Um, modes of displaying and of course I also have an ASCII mode and I am interested on some kind of meta level um, how this ASCII modes, these ASCII modes and roguelikes work. Why do we as players understand this view? Why can we imagine that this ad sign is a player and that R is red or something else? Um, so how does this work from a communication sciences um, view? Um, we always, ah, just an overview of what we read uh, the parts. So what does communication science to do with roguelikes in general? So why is it important? So then a little overview about different symbol types. Um, and then the question if the same game is still the same game if it uses graphics or ASCII types, um, uh, ASCII characters or what else. So we always ask in communication science, how do we communicate? And there's a rather famous little short text by two scientists, uh, which are actually linguists, um, this is, which is called the same thing, and they try to explain how people understand each other using words and using non-linguistic cues. And a roguelike, as every computer program, is this question, how do we communicate with computers? So this comes to interface, um, although an active interface, so using the interface and viewing the interface of the screen. And this is uh, a basic process, really simplified, the player uses the interface to interact with the virtual environment, the virtual environment shown in many different ways. Um, this active passive thing comes down to um, typing something or using the mouse for doing something and for viewing at the screen and um, have some kind of reception of the things which are shown on the screen. And this is the thing or the part I want to concentrate now on this passive viewing on the screen. So I will not cover how to move or which keys to use or what else, just how do I interpret an ad or an ad or letter on the screen. Um, this question then, um, because of this reading process, changes to how do we understand roguelikes. So how um, do we look at the letters and which cognitive processes might be, um, might be underway, I don't know if it's the right word, um, in understanding roguelikes. So and when I thought uh, when I started to think about this topic, I had a look at these old symbol theories by Pierce and some other guys who um, divide three types of symbols. Um, perhaps some of you know these theories. They divide icons as first category. Icons is just a graphical representation which is somehow similar to the object which is denoted um, or pictured by the symbol. Here, for example, if I have a calculator icon on my desktop, I know this is a calculator I can use. Um, another type would be such traffic signs. Um, this is really arbitrary, so someone invented a convention to or a code with this form and said, so now this um, form will um, mean this thing. And lots of our symbols are such arbitrary things. Um, um, and the last um, most known type is index, so if you see a fire from an accident, from a car accident, you see the fire as a symbol for a sign for this accident. 
So these are the three basic types. And I started to think um, on roguelike graphics and SE representation based on these types. Um, mostly these uh, symbols or all symbols show actual objects or objects we at least know from some kind of reality if we are depicted on the screen for example. But in roguelikes we have the um, phenomenon that we also have to show fantasy objects perhaps nobody has ever seen or fantasy objects other people have only um, imagined. So um, I took the time to, with these things in mind, to have a look at different roguelike symbols to make some kind of categorization. I tried to find, for example, um, uh, um, try to find examples for this arbitrary relation. So symbols which are totally arbitrary or convention or convention in roguelikes. For example, often or in some roguelikes, I see this percent. Uh, character for depicting food or some um, such things, or I see this dollar sign for depicting money or credits or what else. Um, these are totally arbitrary. There's no visual uh, visual similarity between the percent sign and perhaps meat or food in a general way. A special case is perhaps this dollar sign because it is just the use of an old existing sign everybody um, or nearly everybody should know um, but still it is arbitrary. Some time in the past somebody has said okay now the money in the United States and some other countries is depicted with such a sign. Um, so this is one category. The other is of course if I use a graphical interface I can really have an icon if I have such a person with a sword in its hand um, looks a little bit like a hero or, whatever, or such things, um, the player should know, okay, this is the player character with, um, and can do different actions. Um, a semi-graphical relation would also be this type of icon. Here, for example, this, um, this double cross um, used often for walls in roguelikes. It just looks a little bit like walls um, or perhaps like the single brick stones which made up a wall. Um, so this is somewhat graphical but still a letter, an ASCII chart. Um, the same thing for this question mark. It is often used for scrolls. Um, and well, just the form of the question mark is similar to a scroll which is somewhat flexible and um, depicted sometimes in graphical icons in the same way. So then we have many characters which are no real symbol, mostly monster characters um, which only have an autographical relation to the thing they um, depict. For example, an R is the first letter of red, or a K is the first letter of cobalt, or Christ, Christ is a monster in my game too, and <laughs> um, some kind of special monster, really strong and um, always insults the people. So, um, the point of all these categories is you have to know um, different things if you want to understand these categories. <coughs> um, so, you have to meet different requirements if you want to play successfully a game, especially if this game is new to you or especially if a roguelike genre, genre at all is new to you. Um, you this can, uh, um, there should be a large arrow which goes from the top to the bottom, but obviously it's not visible at the wall. It's not so problematic. And the point is, um, the knowledge you have to know to understand the roguelike um, has at least three steps. You have some basic general knowledge about certain things in the world. This knowledge is also used for understanding everything, it's not used for understanding everyday life. You have some special cultural knowledge which not everybody shares but at least some people of your own culture and you have some well, language knowledge and all these kinds of knowledge have to um, be used to understand a roguelike which is mixed up of these different types of symbols or, or relations I showed here. And 
um, I tried to make a loose relationship between these graphical relations to a knowledge category or these arbitrary relations. Um, it does not fit 100%, but there are some similarities. So if you see a picture, a real picture, a graphics, um, you can mostly use your, gen your general knowledge, your basic knowledge to see what there is. If there is a hero with a sword, you see at least he's a guy um, with some kind of weapon. Um, although this weapon is nearly some kind of special knowledge. If you have never seen such a weapon or have never, um, have never, yeah, have never seen such a weapon, it might be problematic. Um, this special cultural knowledge um, is important for these arbitrary relations. If you do not know a dollar sign depicting money, you won't understand the game if it uses this sign. And language knowledge mainly for orthographical relations. If you do not know how to write red or warm or, what, or dragon, you will have problems to identify a D or a K or an R, or an R, or an R um, to, um, for the correct object. Then I had a look at most symbol types in Lambda Rogue and I tried to uh, to categorize them using my categories um, and I found out that at least 27 are totally arbitrary so I did not really thought about their meaning I just um, tried to use something not too far away perhaps then I had 14 semi-graphical symbols for example the walls or the ring or these uh, papers or pages for scrolls and I have only one autographical um, symbol in these categories which would be the T, the big tree up there um, all other autographical relations are only also semi-graphical which? Oh, tree, 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 I would say it's also semi-graphical um, well so I see a tree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't see the tree there, so um, as, um, as, um, perhaps it's a little on the border. Um, the small tree is I have a small tree I categorize to semi-graphical because it is just um, like from the top you look to, to such um, mm -hmm. um, the trees without branches. Yes, the other kind of trees. <laughs> um, sorry that my English is sometimes a little bit <coughs> problematic. Um, and the tree, I, well, it shows because it is T and I thought a tree, so that's my tree. Um, so that's my intention view, to make it. I think from side view, with the bottom of that T being the trunk and going up to just. Yeah, I understand this. I understand the point. Um, so perhaps it fits to both categories from a more objective point of view um, than mine. Um, um, at least 11 of my 27 arbitrary um, symbols are where I try to pick up some conventions of other roguelikes um, because um, in 2006 when I first released the early alphas um, all people complained about everything um, and the use of unknown symbols or unconventional symbols was one of these things so I changed it so, the question now is, and I can't answer this question really, is it still the same game if I use graphics, like I showed, I've shown at the beginning, if I use graphics, or if I use smaller graphics perhaps, or if I use ASCII. So, it should of course be the same game, and only um, the player decision which interface he likes most, the intention of the programmer or the author of the game, um, should always be communicated in a good way. Um, but I think it is not the same game because the different types of visualization produce different cognitive effects in people. Um, so because um, the interpretation processes of pictures and of letters um, require the different knowledge categories and mixed knowledge categories. Um, other pictures in mind 
tend to appear. So this is um, a thing we all know from our rogue risk group discussions. Somebody says, ASCII is better for fantasy, for imagination, and for dragon I can imagine is always more um, dangerous and bigger and better than the dragon you can pick, um, uh, you can draw on an, in an icon. And uh, this is indeed true. So the programmer or the author of the game might have the problem that the game he wants to communicate or the content he wants to communicate is not um, recepted in the intended way by the player. So now, unfortunately, my presentation, so my slides end here, but I'm not yet finished, so the rest of these things I have to um, talk even more freely. Um, because the problem is, these symbols not only um, appear single, as, as single symbols, but they appear together with other symbols. And um, perhaps I just um, open up a text editor so I can. I can show it. Uh, ultra edit is in the uh, UE. Oh. Yeah. Um, I don't know. If it's... So um, I just want to compare some things. Um, I did not find the time to put it into the slides. So um, if I just have a corridor with some walls, this is of course easily to understand because I only have to process three types of symbols, the wall tile, the floor tile and the player tile. Um, then if uh, well, um, just maybe we have to think about it that uh, this is going on a video as well which is quite small. So maybe just increase the font size by a lot. I don't so know if this, this is possible to use increase the, the font size here. Or should I use perhaps Word or something? Or mm -hmm. an office? Uh, an office. No, no, as you use the make giant fonts. That's very interesting. Because I might not have a fixed point. <coughs> fixed space in the scope. So uh, I try to use some courier font. Um, I'll try the uh, Windows Start Bank and go to run the panel. So now if I have um, my Christ here who wants to kill me um, and perhaps even have a door which is closed next to um, us, I have to process two types of symbols more and if I have a real big display with a whole map, with a whole dungeon view, I have to see lots of different things and um, Although we don't think about it, or it is not conscious for us that we are interpreting every t um, all the time all these combinations, um, it gets complicated, or more complicated than in graphical view, of course. And so now I thought about it, um, there must be some kind of rules uh, which are inherent to these dungeon views, some kind of combinations which always occur and some kind of, some combinations which would never occur. For example, in most roguelikes um, this would be considered to be a bug but not a predictable kind of character combination. So, um, and now a little project of mine is um, to well, create or to find rules for a certain roguelike character syntax. So I want to find certain combinations, certain combinations which can be uh, predicted in certain circumstances. And I don't know for what this could be useful. Perhaps it could be sometime applied in a real roguelike game, if, um, perhaps for artificial intelligence, but at least it is interesting for trying to describe um, human communication and human character processing. So roguelikes can be a good um, example if you um, if you always talk about such things. So how humans understand language and understand each other and understand interfaces. Um, so it's a little bit work in progress. Um, the next big point will be that I look, have a look at every roguelike I can 
download and try and transfer my computer and make first this symbol um, research, so which kinds of symbols are, um, are used in roguelikes and then I would try to find these combinations of certain typical um, symbol combinations, combinations of symbol combinations, <laughs> sorry. Um, and then I don't know what to do with this, but it is interesting for me. And perhaps this little um, presentation gives you a little bit insight what what things are going on in my mind if I talk <laughs> about roguelikes. So these things are also in my mind if I, when I program my own roguelike. So that's why sometimes my own roguelike differs in certain aspects from other roguelikes concerning interface mainly. Um, I um, recognize in the discussions on um, web games, roguelike development, that most people don't share my little strange view on these things. <laughs> um, but, well, I will keep it for a while <laughs> and perhaps I will inform you about the results of my little research. Unfortunately, this is not funded by any research organization. <laughs> it's just it's just hobby and, well. Anyone is hearing us now? <laughs> yes, <laughs> if we fun. put this into the internet and some um, the Deutsche Forschungsgemeinschaft German Science Foundation, perhaps we will spend lots of money on this topic. Uh, <coughs> these were just my two cents on the topic. I wonder, uh, do you know Scott McCloud's uh, book, actually comic book, uh, Understanding Comics? It's no. a very influential book. Uh, I think uh, Jeff, uh, who was it? Uh, anyways, one thing that it mentions, that it explains, is how uh, comic books can uh, reach much deeper uh, into, uh, make you feel much uh, deeper emotions when they are drawn in very sloppy ways, mm -hmm. in, in very simple uh, symbols, than when they are realistic. And the theory he, he shows is that uh, when you are looking at, at things, you see uh, very little deta details. Mm -hmm. you, it's very detailed. So things that you see detailed are automatically outside, outside of you. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, when you, for example, when I look at this bottle, I see all the light reflexes and the letters and everything. But if I hold this bottle as a tool or a weapon or something to <laughs> wet myself with, <coughs> uh, become, I don't watch it anymore, mm -hmm. but I feel it as an object. And it's very general object. I, I feel the weight, the shape. I. I I'm conscious of the shape, and it's just the general uh, outline of it. So it becomes a part of my body and it becomes internal to me. Mm -hmm. Also, when I talk to someone, I look at his face and I see uh, the mimics yeah. uh, of the face, I see it in very uh, teeny detail. But when I'm thinking about my own emotions, I only know the, gener the general, uh, I don't know exactly how I look. Mm -hmm. I know that I'm smiling or that I'm blinking, but uh, this is very general. So uh, the, ge the general things, the, the generalized symbols, uh, are more internal to you. And uh, Scott McCloud uh, shows one technique that, that's often used in Japanese mangas, Japanese comics, uh, that the main character uh, is very uh, simple. Mm -hmm. It's drawn in a very simple way. But the main evil character uh, and all the backgrounds are very detailed. Mm -hmm. This way the reader is concentrating on the main character and it's becoming the main character, yeah. but the evil characters are the evil outside, mm. outside ones. So I think uh, it could be connected with this notion of nice graphical game where you actually watch a movie and a roguelike game where you have only symbols.
maybe the, the player came and it should stay the edge and everything else is working. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> so this is one thing I actually did lots of the time in Lambda work because I like this from an aesthetic point of view that the dungeon is graphical but the monsters and the player is not graphical. I just recently changed to either whole graphical or either fully ASCII. So um, I liked that but most people were confused by this kind. Um, well, the, the example I just earlier, the, the Asriel one in that TCOD engine seems to almost be going into that area because quite often the background is only done with solid colors mm -hmm. but has this almost real graphical texture to it mm -hmm. well as it keeps all the ats and r's for the orthography okay. that's actually something that uh, i don't like in modern games with realistic graphics they're even more realistic i don't know if you saw the fallout 3 movies it's insanely realistic and you don't know whether something that lies on, on the floor, is it an item you can pick up or is it just some decoration? Yeah. Uh, the point in Hunt's um, uh, graphical adventures when yes. they went from all the items you can interact with lying on the left hand corner of the screen in a totally different draw versus being buried in this full color picture and you've got to flip on every book in the library to find the one with the slip of paper. Yes. Mm. One thing that uh, I really liked the point you made about there being sort of correct and incorrect arrangements of characters in a roguelike. You know, as you said, the axe founded by walls or mm -hmm. even like a door showing up in a corner junction of some walls. Mm -hmm. And so it definitely seems to suggest there's, there's a grammar underlying how these characters are arranged. But as for a use to that, the obvious use is the same use we put grammars to in CS normally, which is as a generative grammar. Namely, when I'm creating, when I'm doing a dungeon build, I'm trying to build the, I'm trying to arrange a word, a, a dungeon, which is correct in this grammatical sense. And so it's, it's like that's, that's one approach I did and, and kept reusing my seven day roguelikes is having a whole bunch of tiny little five by five pieces of mm -hmm. valid dungeon that I know I can stamp together in mm -hmm. an order. And I always get a valid dungeon. And maybe that's why I like the results of that so much, is those pieces were sort of the, the, the better, better scale to look at your, your, your symbols on than the individual characters. Yeah, this is a, a very useful way to, <laughs> or easy way to create random dungeons. I always had problems with all these mathematical approaches for dungeon creation, and then I switched to this puzzle tile thing. Um, but what I wanted uh, to say with the syntax or grammar thing is that also the player and the monsters and the items would belong to this grammar or things like traps in a dungeon. Um, uh, so for example, um, if, um, the, the mon um, one kind of monster, these cave worms in my game, um, sometimes produce such things called cave worm experiments, which have some certain effects on the players. And um, the, the appearance of these um, experiments uh, is predictable, or it makes predictable where the cave worms or the mothers of these worms um, would have been. Of course, this is really simple from the player's point of view because if there's, this would be an index in these in this symbol types of uh, this symbol categories. Um, if there's in a cave worm experiment, it is obvious. Because our everyday life tells us if something leaves, um, leaves some, um, something, where has something. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> I think you know what I want to say. Mm -hmm. yes. So, but um, for scientific purposes, it is important to make uh, um, to have a view on it on a more abstract level. So I just try to complicate things which are easier for the everyday player, I think. Um, but, well, perhaps someday it might be useful for programming purposes. I don't know yet. Um, I just well, created an already yesterday. lived in dungeons, right? Hmm? It's like creating dungeons, because one trouble with the puzzle tiles that I use is there's no creatures in them. So I then do a separate population algorithm to fill the dungeon. But if, if you had a grammar that could as you say, include items and creatures in a logical way, you'd have a dungeon created that 
has creatures in the right area without the need to almost pre-roll a dungeon to have the creatures move around properly, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could try to find different types of rooms which are connected somehow just because of these symbols and the grammar of these symbols mm -hmm. to include things. I think um, the guy who's developing Am Amband is trying to do something similar. In the dungeons there are many rooms with uh, lots of symbols surrounding them, having meaning like windows, pictures on the walls and stuff like that. And items laying around, like for example excrements, um, food left behind and stuff like that. And tries to, to make the enemies who are around this area fit to the theme the room has. I think there was a description of uh, um, the drum generating algorithm on the old roguelike use site. Uh, the, the very first, first one with the 3D logo uh, that uh, assumed you, you have a, this uh, every room has a list of other rooms it can connect to with probabilities and that you have for example, you had granary that could connect with uh, a meal, or uh, you had a throne room that had to uh, connect to a guard room before it could connect to anything else, uh, things like that. And uh, I used this approach in my very first project, the, the one in, written in True Pascal. Mm -hmm. uh, and I found that it didn't make very nice dungeons, but it could be used to generate very nice uh, towns. Mm -hmm. You just, instead of, of drawing corridors, you draw uh, roads, and uh, instead of having solid uh, stone around it, you had uh, some forest generated. And uh, it really made nice towns because, well, you had those connections that Grenell was connect connected with shop and, uh, and the mill, and, there was main square and mm -hmm. all those. <coughs> yeah, right. Okay. I have um, <laughs> two questions that are well, three that I have more psychological type, of, but you mentioned them. The first one is that um, people always say that ASCII is in some sense better for imagination if, they, if there's a capital D and that's a dragon that I can imagine a dragon. Now, I, I never played Python, I only played ASCII in my life. Uh, and never imagine the dragon. I, I see the capital of the D at the end, two, two meals is addressed, well, the name was monster, and uh, there's a color and, uh, and uh, evaluate it. I think I, I never mentally uh, went to that level where, where I actually imagine the dragon. And I would really like to know if I'm the, the exception or, the, or if it's normal or if, it, if it's something in between. So I, I mean, many of you have tiles, so it's probably not easy for you, but I mean, that's, uh, do you see the dragon? Do you see the dragon? Do you have the dragon? Do you have the dragon? I never thought about playing, but I remember. Okay. Like, I dreamt of a dragon, so I was confused. Did you <laughs> dream <laughs> about being an astronaut? <laughs> no, I, I didn't see myself in the dream, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more I dreamed about the bees. Okay, yeah. I, 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 was, I, I always thought of it as a dragon, and would say, that's a red dragon. But I'd never, yeah, I'd like, never go beyond the words yeah, to the yeah, image. Yeah, yeah. To, to, to me, it's purely formal. I mean, it, it, it has a lot that I know, it's a good, it's better than, you know, she will, which is also not self born so the dragon so visual. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and it has it's very visual. I, I actually don't know how a Winoxino looks like. <laughs> I've never seen it. Um, so yeah, so I, I, I think that this, this, this um, uh, reasoning that ASCII is better for imagination may, may be valid, but actually not for everyone. For example, like, I don't like tiles. I think all tiles are very good, but I still, I, I still like them less than, uh, than, than ASCII because it, it's so much, so much simpler for me to pass. I mean, it's, a, it's just all the information is there. Nothing, nothing uh, superfluous is, is on the screen, so I'm, I'm, I'm very simple in that, that regard. I'm just saying, good, that it's not always that ASCII is better than imagination. ASCII is also better for, for, for just less, less of everything. So more yeah. abstraction, less, less visualization. And the other thing that you brought up... Also, because... I think uh, Crawl is the only game I really adopted to the tiles. <laughs> Strange. Uh, I think um, ASCII, uh, the pattern recognition, I think it works somehow faster or I think that, that makes it really, 
easier to, to uh, grasp the dungeon. And, but I think uh, for tiles, you can, uh, you can put more into tiles, you can have more uh, pictures, more different pictograms. More so you can get put more information, put the health, bu health bar into yes. it. Yes. And, and has been doing it. Yes. Um, yeah, and I think uh, with tiles, you have uh, more a uh, learning. You have to first learn the icons. Uh, and but when the tiles are done in the world, then, then you can see it's easier, I think, for, for new players. It's easier to add the tiles and to ask it. This is the thing which. Uh, because you realize yes. this is an animal with four legs and it it's, has it's big teeth, and the, in, in the letter to just say it's an R. And it's yeah, yeah, and this is the point I made in my presentation too. that yeah that um, especially for new players this could be important because um, what you said, if there's an animal with some uh, arms, legs and so on, I know, okay, this must be my enemy and I have to slay it. But if there's a letter, I first have to think, okay, what, what, what does this letter mean? What did this letter mean? Of course, many roguelikes have identification functions and so on, but it's um, a greater effort, I think. At mm -hmm. least for the first time. Okay. If you know the codes and if you know how the codes um, are um, implemented and which conventions are used in this game, this might be easier. That's the same thing um, that... But, but um, I think you have a good point, mainly that when you ran into troubles when you didn't use the officially sanctioned codes, that tells you that the, the people who like ASCII mm -hmm. like ASCII with a specific code. They don't want to learn another code. Which yes, it's it's hard to learn the code in the Yeah, these time. are people who are experienced. Yeah. New, new players. Yeah, well, so um, with, with tiles, people don't say this is a different tile set than the previous game. You should use the other tile set. They're, they're actually mm -hmm. like a different tile set for each game. Uh, that's something else. You can, with graphics, you have another layer of communication. You not only show the gameplay, but also some mood and uh, some background information. Uh, you, you even show pretty animations and, and that's also some kind of entertainment. It's uh, more like uh, watching a movie, this kind of information. Uh, you enjoy just watching the, the graphics. Uh, with ASCII you just enjoy the game. Yes, and I think the um, difference between ASCII and, um, and, and graphics is in the sense between using the mouse or the, or, or the keyboard. The, the mouse is much more intuitive and it's easier to get people to, into the game, but in, in some sense the keyboard might, might be, if it's somewhat more, more effective in, so, in, in, in times of uh, turns per turns per hour play, if, if you want it. It was only that you could use the ASCII uh, output and adapt it to mouse. I mean, there's more to it, as I said. It's a totally different experience. And maybe would you just say the, uh, that the, um, I mean that the tile map is, is a lot going on, it comes details, and there's different tiles for, for the walls, and it all looks pretty, but at a glance, what you mentioned, it's, it's difficult to see everything, and if you have to put uh, attention to a lot of detail, uh, those are the monsters around you, then it's getting difficult, and then playing the SD might be better, it's, it's maybe the situation or something. So I guess with the mouse keyboard analogy, I'd say that. The mouse can actually, the studies seem to show that it's as fast or faster than keyboards, but the big difference is you're constantly using your brain to track the mouse moving to its target. You have to, you have to be running this process constantly, doing that relationship between the mouse and, and where you're moving. Whereas the keyboard, I just move a certain, I have my, my hand on the cursor keys, I can move left, right, up, down, without having to really do, do a lot of uh, um, um, feedback loops. It's just a one command I send off to my arm to do it. And, it's uh, like riding your bike. You don't speak about moving your legs, you don't think about tuning the uh, handles of, of the bike. You yeah. just but I'm still using part of my mind to do that, which is why when I'm distracted, when I ride a bike, I crash into a barrier or something. Yeah. Um, well, it's, uh, so I guess I'm trying to say with the, 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 the ASCII representation, it's sort of like the keyboard insofar as it's it's really stripped down a lot of those layers. It's taken. It's already done that that uh, that uh, that parsing of the scene for you, and it's expressing it to you entirely in that in a sort of um, tokenized manner. So the, for example, some people complain that C is something like basic that's been tokenized for you, and all the begin ends have been replaced by open braces, close braces. You know, you've already got this conversion to 
very short symbols, but you know, the, the, the stuff that you need at the earlier level doesn't become relevant eventually. And that's why we found it so fast to parse a screen, look at a screen in NetHack and know what's going on without having a lot faster than this uh, graphic representation. Yeah. So, so in the end, for, for, for gathering uh, a large player base, I think it's, um, it will be mandatory to have um, tiles, two tiles, and I think that will be the future. And uh, unfortunately, in Kroll, we only have, uh, well, you have all three, but not all three together. You can't play uh, tiles and tiles together, but uh, this will come, I think. I, I mean, many, many, many players um, um, start with tiles and have to, have to really learn um, us in order to, to play on, on the internet, which they, which they like it in the end more than the tiles. But, but of course, it, it would be best to have both. So I think maybe in 10 years, ASCII will just be, just be um, a rally. And, and nobody but the three will play it. There is this thing that uh, people who really uh, get into playing Quake, yeah. for example, turn those X icons uh, mm -hmm. for the weapons. Uh, Quake normally has rarity weapons. Yes. But uh, you, there is an option to, to display just a colorful icon. For no, the, that's for the that. That's uh, yeah. most professional players yeah. turn it yes, on I, because I it's and turn off all the lighting effects and yes. everything they're allowed to yeah. turn off. Yeah, so they're stripping down everything that's, that's just um, so a flavorful noise, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, and the other question is, is, is um, you mentioned that if the, if the um, screen becomes very big, then, then the, um, the, the, the player's mind has to pass a lot of, of letters, right? And just because the, the screen is so big. That reminds me of something. Um, Crawl has, I think, 80 by, um, by, 80 by 70. A map which are pretty huge, but you only see a, a, a very small part of it, like 20 by 20. And every new player, um, me included, uh, complains why why this is so small, especially when you come from Netic, where you can see the whole map on, on the level. <coughs> and what, what, what you just told me, um, um, gave me that perhaps it's better to show only the small map because you have to pass less, you see your, your surroundings and a bit more, and, and perhaps this is psychologically better than, than showing everything. Like the, the whole 80 by 70 map, and then you got just somewhere in there. So that that's just an idea. I'm not sure, but I, I, I always liked that at crawl. Ah, oh, small from screen. From the beginning? Yeah. Did yeah. you play that before? Did you play that before? Um, no, no, no. So that's I think I played that half okay. quite significantly. That was my biggest trouble moving to the Game Boy Advance. Was that I realized for it to be net half, you have to be able to see the whole screen. Mm. Yeah. For for reasons like positional memory, mm. I remember that that was over there. And also for like the blindfold technique in that hack, you put a blindfold on and yeah. see all the monsters on the level. Which is broken in the same too, but yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it's like, you know, if you only see a small window, you'd have to scroll around, which yeah. would really change the mechanics of the game. Yeah. But, you know, you can't fit 80 by 24, even with that supervision, you know. And so, <laughs> so I, I, I consigned myself to working with the window. And uh, I didn't know if crawl at the time, or I would have been a lot more relaxed about it. But, uh, but I found that I really like the, the window view, yeah. it, it really opens up a lot of possibilities. Yes, I think, I think mentally there's also another process of abstracting, of, of um, the slowing of the arms. I mean, of course, the, the, the once the two rooms um, further can be very important, but in most cases, it, it, it's not, it, 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 it is a local problem and it's, it's good to see the, the local stuff, I think. So, in, in some sense, it, it's, it's better about I find it interesting, though, that talking about map sizes, the number of tiles you have on screen in these graphical representations tend to be a lot smaller than the number of tiles in any of the I mean, the net hack or ank band or even like crawl. Yeah. Crawl's 20 by 20. What's, how big is the Diablo screen, for example? Um, powder's like, you know, 5 by 7 or something small like that. 5 by 7? Uh, it's very small. And then play the other. Oh. No, no, powder is. Ah, powder, okay. powder is very small. It's a small screen and 16 by 16 <coughs> tiles. So you run out of tiles very quickly. Yeah. You know? um, so I was just kind of curious if anyone, like, if, if that's a sign that maybe. There, you can't parse as many graphical tiles as you can character tiles? Well, it makes sense because, of course, uh, the graphical tiles are more complicated and they're less, um, they're less familiar. We, we, we all read, read Latin alphabet every day, we're used to parsing it. Actually, this, the second game you showed, um, that it was graphically, it had a lot, a lot of tiles, but they were um, and, and so stripped down, like, in a, um, to, to, to me, and, I have bad eyes and I'm sitting there with half of it. It looked like a, a strategy game. So the so individual letters not as important, but just to see where, where are my guys, where are their yeah. guys. And, and so, so in this sense, you are again reducing information that it's not so important um, uh, what is on this in, in individual glue, but, but just um, this is 
so less less important than uh, less information than actually is shown. It's important. So that's why it is easy to pass. I, I think I, I I think we, we all um, saw rather well what is going on, on on your screen. So this is so this is. I think that you have tiles with um, rather little information, so it's okay if you have lost them. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And those ones were actually asking. Yes, and it's in all right, but they're so small, small they could be tiles. Yes, in all, yeah. yeah. But, but then still again, down tiles. Try to play unbound on a small screen. It's uh, horrible to, to play. To be honest, I only play it in a second before. It's a, a complete uh, unbound mode, a yeah? completely different uh, uh, genre. A completely different kind of roguelike games where, yeah. where you don't, well, in the road, in NetHack, uh, they are local. Yeah. They are very small. In, in uh, Moria, on the map, you, you think about w what level you're on, you think about uh, where do you go, to, when do you go to town. You, uh, it's as if you had the town with you all the time as, yeah. a, as one of the minis, yeah. actually. If you have the scrolls of recall, and it's practically yet another menu. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it becomes, uh, uh, well, the distances are much, much uh, larger. So you usually only uh, meet one monster at a time or one group of monsters. Mm -hmm. uh, the loops are also uh, larger, so when you ra are running away, you must uh, run must, uh, much more distances mm -hmm. to, to lose the monster, and, and you just can't uh, play on a small screen. Because, uh, but then, then again, you don't uh, look at individual features of the dungeon. You think about rooms, you mm -hmm. don't think about mm -hmm. statues or so it's less, it's less things. Uh, or, or something like that. It's more a uh, management game mm -hmm. than, than a tactical game. And the one thing for poor tiles is that you can encode so much information in there. You can encode how, that you are a monster is on the staircase, on there are additional 10 items under the monster, then the health yes. of the monster. I know, but this is actually a trend I'm not too happy with. Um, I mean, of course, so we're, we're adding this type of information, and, and it's, it's probably good, but I'm afraid you, you can't do too much. I mean, if you have, if you have this the symbol for the monster, and then it's, it's like, like, um, like a symbol in chemistry, right? like you have to let us see, and then you can put four numbers in all the four corners, and sometimes that's not enough, and then you need more, and then, and then it, it gets from more and more and more. And I look at the screen, yeah. and perhaps I was just happy that it's a capital C and it's a cyclops, and, and I, I can go on, and I don't care if there are ten um, items on at the feet of the cyclops because I have to kill it before. And um, so, I mean, I, I think one should always try to, to, to reduce the information. I, I, I really, I, I'm serious about this. I mean, you should always try to, to reduce the information at hand and go to a, to a sensible level. Of course, I mean, it, it is, you have to force this decision because different players will give different opinions on this, so you just have to force something. But I, I, I think it is bad to give in to the, to the trend to show as much as possible. I think that's, I think that's a bad a bad news. Did you guys uh, play Dweller, Dungeon Dweller, for the cell phone? Uh, no. I honestly, I like it, this game until the moment when, when Bjorn made the, the characters overlay. He used uh, graphical, car uh, there were always two versions, ASCII version yeah. and graphical version. And at some point he made the ASCII version also overlay uh, characters. Mm -hmm. So you could uh, see a cobalt on top of a staircase or mm -hmm. things like, like that. And then uh, it, it stopped working. Somehow, somehow mm -hmm. it, it's uh, just visual noise and, and it's not as uh, nice, simple game as it used to be. But he had very small tiles, right? They're like 4x4 four four pixels or something? Mm, I think it's 8x8. Eight eight. Yeah. Yeah. It, yes, it, it's pretty small. Because I just recently did Battle of Powder. For the longest time, um, the, because of laziness on my part, I didn't bother having a, the cobalt on staircase show up on top of the staircase. It would just show up with a black border around it. And uh, around version 100, when I was doing the graphical fixes and that quite means just making new graphics for me, I decided to actually support that, that ability. And I was kind of worried about this problem, mm -hmm. namely with different backgrounds. In the classical tile set, it looks, you can't play it with 
the background showing through. So I had to have an option menu to turn off the backgrounds in those cases. But I think the problem is almost in the graphics chosen. Namely, it's very important to make sure that the characters still stand out against the background. And so it's hard to do with 8x8. Eight eight. When you have 16x16, 16 16, you can draw the black borders around everything, and then they stand up relatively nicely. Uh, Japanese are playing game work around that by making, for example, all monsters animated. Mm -hmm. So yes. they walk yeah. all the time, even if they stand Definitely. in place, Definitely. and then you'll know which places are monsters yeah. and which are... This is really good. Yeah, and that's, that's something I want to do at some point too, is, is put the fidget animations in, right? Just have a constantly cycling yeah. animation. I mean, Ultimate 3 did that way back when, and it meant that even though they had really poor Poor artwork for monsters. They just monsters. mirror it. Oh, two, two, two frames are not yeah, one, frame. one frame and it was mirrored. Ah, yeah. oh, very good. Yes, no. <laughs> very good. Yeah. Actually, this helps with another thing. Um, if you, that, that, that you mentioned in the talk, um, I mean, if, if I am new to this, to this genre and I see a screen, it's, it's, it's just all, all, the, all garbage, right? I mean, it's just, just all kinds of, of symbols and letters. But, um, but just like in, in an action game, like in a two dimensional shoot em up, some some of the of the garbage is moving. I mean that's the enemies, and this is this is of course the, the same in ASCII. So I, I, I just if somebody tells me that space is uh, waiting, and then I wait, and then I see some some of the letters are move, moving towards me. Of course, it's, it's extremely intuitive that, that, that these 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 are the enemies, or at least at least monsters, right? And um, and so in, in this sense, it, it is quite easy to pick up um, um, which is which. So it, it's much harder to learn uh, what the what the um, what the, what the items are. Because I mean, you, you really have to, to, to go out of, go out of your way and learn the comments for, for, for picking up and, and, and doing something. But killing monsters is, is, I mean, is straightforward. They move towards you, you move towards them, and then, and then you kill them. But, but of that, course, that could be helped in the ASCII world. As soon as you're no longer cursors, cursor space, you could have the little D fidget, you know, just move up and down one pixel. And, uh, yes. <laughs> and if they all do it slightly differently, then you've got all these. You have to make sure it's not looking like they're all... <laughs> but just, yeah, exactly. So, so, you know, it's like you don't need any more frames of animation. You can have, as yes. I say, zero, one frame of animation, not even mirror. Actually, just have that's how I did uh, combat animation in that my game. I, I can show it. Can, can I get yeah. the... Yeah. It has m much more frames because uh, I like it to draft them. But uh, it would work just with a single frame. Anybody that done facing with us, he make them. You can do this with, with uh, JavaScript in the browser. No, these, it's these, these jumping monsters. Uh, I mean, these jumping uh, characters. Uh, yeah, as soon as you're no longer just working on text terminals, you can get sub sub character movement. Okay, so it's a small. Yeah. No, no, I see, yeah. The monsters actually also have only two frames of animation. Because I, I thought, okay, I want to have a lot of monsters, I, I can make them expensive to make. So basically, they just <laughs> move around. I, whole, whole animation is made by, by moving the sprites around. Mm -hmm. yes. You can pick up the item, and it's also just by moving the, the item. Uh, it's very simple. You can do it with single frame of animation, no no, no animation at all, and just move the, the object around. If you if you if you make an ASCII route like, uh, but in graphical mode, for example, using SDL. Uh, you can move them, those letters, also you can make them shake when they are hit. Yes, you can exactly. uh, make them do those little jumps when they are And of course they have to shake more when they are hit um, harder. For you, you, if you, I mean, or, or when they dodge. Yeah, yeah, exactly. dodge, yeah you miss so they go, <laughs> dodge out of your way. Or I, said, this, I think this, this will help a lot because then you have to read less messages because it's kind of all in the, in, in the main screen. And one trouble I've had trying to understand how to time that is um, when I'm in a battle, it's a whole hold down the right arrow key to empty the room because I'm super powerful. But um, have you addressed how to sort of interrupt those animations when the user wants to attack five times quickly? Well, I made them quick enough 
the, the, the user has to wait for this because it becomes your keyboard repeat rate is the yes. rate of the animation. I had actually a problem with ignoring the comments that are during uh, until the animation finishes. Mm -hmm. uh, the solution is uh, well, I wanted it to feel like normal games. Mm -hmm. Normal, I mean, most of the games. <laughs> around the, so the solution is to uh, Check if there was uh, any key pressed recently. I remember that one key. And if there wasn't, check uh, if any key is held, held down in this order. So you can hold down, for example, left, and at the at the, a corridor fork, only hit uh, up once, and the character will turn there. Even if you don't uh, hit it exactly at the fork, you can hit it a little earlier and it will still go there. Uh, so, so before the characters walked into the T, I can hit up and yes. then the it won't have queued up 500 move left presses. <laughs> yes. It will discount those and immediately start moving upwards. Yes, it, it, it has two mechanisms for holding the keyboard. One is uh, which keys are pressed at the moment and the other is uh, which key was pressed uh, at an event. Mm -hmm. So, and I remember one event, and it has precedence, and uh, the state of keyboard if there was no event. I see. Because my concern is you sort of get a maximum speed, then you can move through the dungeon. Yes. And with, with the one which teleports you to each square, I can move very quickly, just like yes, that. Yes, but it feels unnatural. I tried. Yeah. It, uh, I actually interrupted the animation and made it very fast. Yeah. Uh, when you hit the key, but it felt like it felt very, very natural. And, uh, I, I can see why. Well, that's why I've struggled with this because, like with powder, it's very important that you can move quickly through because you know you've got your empty dungeon that you yes. want to go to the downstairs on. I don't want to wait for animations that want to go. <laughs> no, it's, it's also a problem with uh, the real time game I'm making. It's actually slower than a not real time game because you can skip. Uh, sections like, like pathways or something, uh, you always have to walk back uh, to the shop, buy something, walk along the lane, get there and it's too tedious and I have to come up with some solution, like a town portal. Well, Japanese role playing games also are uh, often tile based and uh, have this animation problem and uh, most of them have run key. Yeah. That only makes it uh, move faster, but doesn't uh, give any gameplay advantage. Mm. Just speeds up the animations. Yes, yes, exactly. Wouldn't in your case it, it not be enough to just have a comment um, run home and then everything... I mean, you just run home, if, if some, some, some enemy appears, you stop and then, then it, it's just all faster? Um, yeah, but the speed is limited to your CPU, so ah, because, yeah, because it, it, it's much good, stuff, yeah. of much course, stuff I mean, is it, happening yeah. while you're moving, and I don't know how quickly. Uh, okay. Okay. But I, I sure can can just skip the rendering, yeah. just make it uh, go quicker. Um, skip the frame rate limitations; it's limited to to 40 frames per second, which is also a problem, by the way, because. The actions you can do are not based on time, but on frames. For example, um, doing an attack uh, takes 40 frames, which is one, one second because it's limited mm -hmm. to uh, 40 FPS. So if your PC is slower or faster, you will have a... Um, well, if it's only if it's slower because it's limited upwards, but mm -hmm. it's not limited downward. Um, <coughs> so you're having... Um, yeah, a different gaming experience if your CPU, CPU is sl slower. Yeah, I was just playing uh, Dungeon Master again, and uh, someone has it fully emulated on the PC. Okay. And uh, there was one of these times of the essence puzzles where you have to press a button, turn left, and throw something quickly. And so fortunately I could go to the command menu, change the speed to glitchly slow, <laughs> and <we'll> go, <laughs> well, here's how I throw. <laughs> Look, plenty of time I should things slow th slowly be thrown. Okay. It's just that. Another thing that has to do with timing and input uh, m might be interesting. I've seen it also in uh, Final Fantasy VI. There was one character that had uh, its moves, uh, its special moves based on combos. Mm -hmm. 
So, like in fighting games, yeah. uh, I think it it would be an interesting uh, way that there were there are those discussions on the news group how to make combat hand to hand combat more interesting. And one uh, thing about that combat is that making just attacks, uh, special attacks, special techniques, just turns it into a mage. Uh, so it's magical. Uh, the same as magical. So you, you think tac tactically, you, you start to collect the spells and it turns into non melee combat. But uh, if you made uh, it that, uh, for example, you hit once, you uh, make a step back and hit again, then it's some kind of special uh, move. Or, or you hit from uh, from the front, then step uh, to the side and hit again, then it's some kind of side swing. Or, or yeah, Slash had some really interesting descriptions of that for his dash roguelike. I didn't even play that. Which game? Dash roguelike? roguelike? Yeah, it's, I haven't played it yet, unfortunately, and uh, I really want to now that I saw the, the different attack motions that were built into it. One thing I, I liked a lot about uh, uh, some of the games made by Slash is that he somehow manages, uh, some of his games are graphical, but he's, he manages yeah. he somehow manages to introduce quite a bit of, um, of uh, eye candy and animation into the ASCII versions as well. And I quite like this combination of uh, ASCII, but still kind of semi-graphical animations, even though it's, it's all in ASCII. But it still has this, uh, for instance, in, in his uh, Zelda game, he has like, the, the, sword, the sword animation coming from, from the player and, and so on. Yes, you can actually go a long way with this. I, I think um, this is not fully explored. We try to make, and we try to make, uh, uh, well, the better god effects or, or something, um, they should be special, o also on the, on the ASCII screen. I mean, uh, that's, yeah. it's much more, uh, much more fun if you really see that the whole screen is affected. And I mean, you, you just, I mean, you know it because it's the effect. But if you really see it, then because everything is blinking, but in a, in a nice pattern, that's uh, that's that's. That's uh, why players always like uh, large drops in Anban when you <laughs> kill a very very <laughs> strong <laughs> monster. <laughs> And it dies, and suddenly around it, uh, all those items. The loot takes up a lot of space, yeah. 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 Oh, cool. yeah. <laughs> that, that's that's one of my first expressions of Doom roguelike. Uh, the first experiences of it was just seeing, you know, the screen dissolve and the, the blood type uh -huh. of pose, just like the Doom game. And it's like, you know, wow, that's yeah. And you know, stuff like the 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 ground becoming bloody when you kill the enemies. You know, those. Um, oh, yeah, those yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you notice the blood in the Yes, I did notice the blood. Should I add more? <laughs> yes, yes blood, blood is good. Well, I don't know, like, it depends blood if, is if that was a normal amount of creatures to kill, and save the more blood for the really good battles, you know? Yeah. Yes, and, and you might get a, a rating, and this is good for the things. <laughs> Another thing it, it um, has, has to do with uh, the combinations you could enter in Final Fantasy, for example. Um, Final Fantasy always was a tactical game where it didn't matter um, that you enter quick commands, so the player didn't need a skill like um, uh, you need for Super Mario to, to, to be good at this game, but uh, tactics. And with uh, this, um, players who were, were good at fighting games had an advantage. Um, and I thought about uh, something I, I first saw on Wizardry, Forsaken Lands. Um, if you opened chests, treasure chests, you had to enter a combination. So you saw uh, like up, up, down, down, A, B, A, B, and you had saw the time running out. And if you hadn't entered the combination, a trap would activate. And I think it, it would be uh, nice in a roguelike game because um, it would... Uh Legend of Rivera had this for traps. Yeah. Uh, there are some traps or events when, when uh, for example, a boulder is... Uh, rolling onto you, and you have to to dodge that boulder. You have to enter some combination, or uh, there is uh, some kind of cursor, and you have to hit the key when yeah. the cursor is in the yeah. right spot, or uh, to you have to exactly type something. Uh, this kind of uh, mini games yeah, yeah. that. Uh, 
I like the combination of tactics and action. But then again, Rivera for which Legend of Rivera, it's for Game Boy Advance. Okay, it's a role-playing game. Yeah. One thing that that reminds me of when you talk about timing and opening chests is one of the neat ideas with the Zelda type ones that these big chests that you open and they'll have the you have found dot 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 and then they intentionally delay right yeah. it's not like the computer's working hard trying to figure out what you found yeah. they, they, they give you the second before they tell you you know 500 rupees one rupee you know <laughs> and so you can build up build up the tension i always have the sound turned off so i don't know the music but you're like you, you know, should do it in combat yeah you hit the most <laughs> you yeah is he going to <laughs> you know but that that's one of the things it's like you, you put down your attack, and this is your last attack, right? You know, you'll, you'll only live one more turn. If, they, if you don't kill it this turn, it's over. And, but you always get the result right away. And, but if you get that delay, right, that's an advantage of the animations, is you have that delay to not know if you're going to live another turn or not, so you get that tension. It's, it's uh, in the Japanese-style uh, combat, uh, you have one character and you have one third, you select some special attack, Yeah. The character jumps, does some complicated combo <laughs> <laughs> that takes a minute, cuts, cuts, jumps cuts, back, cuts, 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 nothing yeah. happens for yeah. a moment, and then there is this miss. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, well, I think we have the same tension in, 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 in the standard game too. And on on tell, they often I often see players who are contemplating for maybe three minutes uh, about about the move. It, it could be their last. So the question is, should they blink, should they do whatever, uh, or, or just attack, and, then, and, and the tension is there, and then they're, they're talking to other people, and then, of course, the, the answer is, is there immediately, but the tension is, 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 is all present. So I'm, I'm, I, I don't think I would like these, um, these uh, real-time um, thingies in, in, in a roguelike. Of course it's fine, but uh, for commercial games, I think um, the question is not if, if the developers like it or not, the question is rather if they could broaden the audience. So this is, this is something we don't have to do. I mean, we, we just do it if we like it or if we don't, we, then we don't. So I think this is, this is different for, for well, commercial I think, games. I think my big trouble is, I think it's a very powerful thing, but like most powerful things should be used sparingly. Yeah. And that whole example of the 10 minute jump sequence for each character's attack to attack the, you know, mu level one mushroom and I'm a level 50 group of fighters. Just just select in the attack menu is more effort yeah. than I want to put into the game. And that's that's what drove me away from those games. There, there um, are some very annoying... Uh, they, I think they weren't uh, better tested enough. Yeah. That or, or Black and White, the game that's driven me insane yes. because it should have been the best game on the planet. Um, they would have the cut screen intro of people talking to you or whatever that you couldn't interrupt in any way whatsoever and then you accidentally triggered it again and you get to sit back for two minutes and say, so <coughs> I can't handle that sometimes. But there's other ways of putting that tension in. Like Diablo, I always think it's a very interesting idea to, you wonder why do they have an identification mechanism in Diablo 2 when you go to Deckard Kane, everything's identified, right? It's like, so all you're doing is just delaying my run back to town. I throw the town portal and run over, uh, get identified. Well, but that's underestimated, I, I think, because uh, one of the big things in Diablo is, even if players don't notice it, uh, what makes uh, the most fun is sorting your items in your inventory. Mm -hmm. Players don't notice that it's so much fun, but they do. Um, you know it's a multiplayer it's, it's like they waiting for them to come back. Yeah, yeah. it's like Tetris. <laughs> Sorting is uh, one of the big yeah, things in this game, and that's why they kept, kept the inventory pretty small. And, and forced you to go back to town or carry yeah. identify scrolls to find out what that gold drop is, because you want to know, do I, is it sell or do I... That's equip, the right? tension factor, yeah. in a sense. Uh, that's, uh, someone had a post at the news group about this. Uh, this uh, preparation, then attention, then uh, you uh, rest. Yeah. Then again, preparation, then uh, combat, and then rest. Mm. This wow. is a cycle that, that uh, makes it interesting and mm -hmm. makes it possible to endure for, for long. In your I don't think it's really a big uh, part of the game to sort out the inventory or so. In Angband, it's really, I think, half of the game or so, or <laughs> even writing XML scripts to actually yeah. <laughs> do it automated. Or I think in, in Attack, people.
spend half an hour sorting the inventory and yes, of course, picking the everything. Wrong because of the bag of holding, and it would have been interesting without the bag of holding, right? You know, that 52 character limit or whatever is also one that even if you ignore your burden status. Yeah. So you have to tell you find your first bag. Yes, yes, exactly. But yes, of course. But but I think the um, the limit on um, on of the inventory, inventory both in, in size and in, in, in weight, is really important. But then it's bad to give means to the player to, to circumvent the limits. I mean, the back first and then the back of holding later. I mean, and then both both um, restrictions have become meaningless. I think that that's pretty bad. So this is, this is to me, it's kind of broken. Well, uh, guess what? Powder. I sort of. You have a very large, you get a grid of like 8 by 10 slots mm -hmm. that you get to fill up in your inventory. So it's like 80 inventory slots. Mm -hmm. And there aren't that many different things you need in powder. So it's usually, usually I just pick up everything and don't think about inventory until it gets full. And then do one sort and drop sequence. Mm -hmm. So it could almost have, an, and there's no weight limits, limitations. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not so sure, like NetHack could have no lim inventory limit. And probably be very similar to the same game because, as you say, for the experienced players, they've already broken it, and it's just the inexperienced players that get to carry enough food and starve to death. Well, it, it just depends if you if you think that um, the artificial restriction on of, of stuff you can carry is interesting or not. If if you think it is interesting, then you shouldn't then you shouldn't break it afterwards. And if you don't think it's interesting, then you, sh you shouldn't add it by that all means. So I think it just should, should be. Um, um, consistent in, in the system, mm -hmm. and I think NetHack has a, a lot of um, a lot of stuff that is originally good, and then then, then you can circumvent it completely, and then it's and then it's not not there anymore. Mm -hmm. With very many things, so that's that, that's a bit sad. I think they, they, they kind of broke their own game. That, that's my opinion. Mostly, if you hit the limit, maybe it's. Uh, I think experienced players also are not so much handicapped by that because they just know what they have to carry, and you in fact. Don't need all this stuff. I think. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, yes. The pack rat syndrome. Yeah. That's is very common in uh, yes, uh, Mad Hag and something. You, you carry the people you, you carry follow. and build stashes in, on level and, and spend hours to bring one stretch well, a, a few know, levels deeper. There is this uh, silent assumption from other games, especially from adventure games, that if you can pick up something, it's us useful. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I, I wanted, uh, in my game, uh, I wanted to have uh, sources of certain items, like sticks or, I don't know, corks for the bottle or empty bottles, uh, that uh, they wouldn't be uh, displayed as items, items, but you could always come to a tree and get a branch if you needed it for anything. I don't know, maybe, because I think that in Adon, kicking down doors to make arrows out of them when you are in a forest is a little silly. Uh, there are some items that could be useful. Uh, that uh, also could be uh, it could be useful to, to emulate having or not having that item because if you go to a desert or go deep into a downtown then you don't have trees around you but uh, it doesn't make uh, sense to emulate each people on the road so that you can pick a, pick up a rock and, and throw it for example there was a very big discussion on, on the Angband news group. I, I didn't re read it. I can interrupt for a moment. Maybe we put the camera on a bit farther away so that we don't have to move it all the time. That's a good idea. <laughs> That's a camera. Um, on this one. Yeah. We just had it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the piano, maybe. Yeah. Okay. That's a maximum distance. Uh, it has a battery, no? Yeah. <laughs> Find a point where it catches all the things. Here? Does the tripod go higher? I assume it does. Uh, 
the original plan. Hi. Oh, you're still recording this? Okay. How do I... There's got to be a way to get this up, maybe. This lift. Ah. You pull. Was it recording this whole time? Yep. It's still recording. Oh, we can edit this on. So, yeah, to the editor, we apologize for just uh, moving the camera while recording live. And... Uh, okay.
if it's not a rare item. Here. Exactly. You have broken sticks. Yeah, I, I think two often arguments for this I hear is, but what about when the player character is, you know, captured in jail naked and needs to use the broken stick as a weapon to escape? And yet then the First of all, as a programmer, if you're going to put that in a situation, you can put broken sticks around the jail cell um, if you want them to do that sort of improvisation. Second of all, usually we don't leave the player and character naked in the first place, so you don't have to read it from scratch ever. Right. So why do you keep getting full sets of play from this order? Well, this is... Oh. <coughs> Sorry. I think the, um, this is only a symptom of a bigger problem. The bigger problem is that you said, okay, in this situation, it would be useful and realistic to have the or the prop is uh, minus one dagger because I can still use this better than my, my breakfasts. But uh, the point of the game is not to be consistent and realistic, but it's fun. Yes. And maybe it's useful for the orc to for the orc guard to prop his graphic dagger when after you escape from prison, but it doesn't mean you have to the, the orcs have to keep dropping their maces and daggers that you don't need uh, when you're level ten and this is the simulation versus game. Yes, yes. In, in rook life, I think gameplay should always be uh, more important than realism, but it, I, mean, I always fall into the trap myself. So it's really hard to, 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 to convince yourself that, um, that the gameplay is more important. Okay? Yeah. This my, if you have graphical tiles, the tile of your own has a mace and a <laughs> chainmail, and the character of the time when his leather armor is like, where's my chainmail? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, didn't fit, so we just deleted it on drop. Both of the sorts of things. Exactly. It also was a good chain, you know, in New York. But I think a lot of roguelike developers start developing a roguelike game to make a simulation, a work simulation, not a game. They, they want emergent gameplay. That's how it was called. Uh, when when uh, you have some game, you can play it. But you don't have uh, rules or goals, and the players invent their rules and goals uh, on the spot. And they play. A lot of physics toolkits work like that. People can spend hours just playing with uh, physics yeah. without really playing any game. Yeah, sandbox game. Yes. Like buff workers, right? Buff workers? It's a game I always want to play, but someone's doing it because it's a lot more work than I have time for. <laughs> yes, I, I would like uh, watching somebody play, I would never touch it. I mean, this is, yeah. this is criminal, but I would like uh, watching, watching somebody play. Yeah, I, uh, actually, he has a function to record movies, but um, I, I didn't find movies anywhere, so, so I went to the forums and, and wrote, come, come on, somebody make a movie. I, I don't want to play it, I just want to play it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, 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 I think it's. I think this is made for for watching, not for me. Yes. At least, at least. I yeah, I was on the forums the day he, he went to the news group and said there is something I'm I'm going to do and yeah. there was only five regular people in the forums and um, I watched the videos and were very um, very um, yeah excited uh, um, excited yeah. Uh, what the game will be like, so I went to holiday, he released the game, I came back from holiday and, and I think he had about 3,000 uh, regular posters <laughs> in the forum or something like that, it was enormous, uh, the success he had. I think that is, this is just, just different, different attitudes of people, so it, it, must, it must hit the the, 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 just the right strength with very, very many players, it's just not... Well, I think it catches that dream of the simulation. Yes. And it, 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 it addresses it full on and says, gameplay second, the Cyclops will rip your arm off, and then I guess there's not much more you get to do in that battle. <laughs> but, uh, you know, but it fixes the problem, namely that the single player wrote, like, okay, I start again from scratch. And this is just one of my dwarfs about this. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Keep yeah. playing, you know. It is, it is very good at something, but of course it's a completely different goal than that. That most broke like set up also. Yeah, I find it always funny. Um, people keep writing stories about what happens in there, mm -hmm. uh, and they the stories are very detailed. Um, but if you uh, if you read further, um, I, uh, it took me some time to understand that this whole stuff is really happening. So dwarves get angry at each other mm -hmm. because uh, someone married someone they love, yes, and, I think. And, and stuff like yeah. that, and, and cats always die. And, 
stuff. Yeah. And that this really happens. It's not just what they made up in their minds. I've played it sometimes, but I couldn't couldn't really recognize what's happening. Lots of icons and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and so for me, it's all about the information overload. Just when I, when I look at the screen, they the learning curve is too low. Just to yeah. Excuse no. me. I'm hungry. Yeah. You would like to eat something? Yeah. Anybody else? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.